will be talking about um, the Heritage and Wheels project that we have at the library. Uh, Kim Reyes is an OPSA master's student, inclusive and sustainable active mobility advocate, and brand ambassador for Bambay Revolutionary Cycles. Heritage on Wheels is a mobile library that can be transported to different communities and institutions. The project enabled a broad reach of opportunities to introduce elementary school age students of Barangay UP Diliman Campus to the value of reading and importance of Philippine heritage. The mobile library itself was constructed out of bamboo, a nod to a material that is integral to local material culture. Beyond the library, Heritage on Wheels serves as a mobile venue to host storytellings and activities for the public on the matter of heritage, archaeology, and culture. So, welcome everyone, and here is Kim Reyes. Uh, thank you everyone for coming, and of course, I'd like to greet everyone a happy new year. This is, I feel like this is going to be a bit different than usual if you're not going to more informal than how informal it usually is. So it'll be a recap of one of the highlights of our year for the B so by the library. Um, and I'm here to talk about that. So when we put the level side of all looking at it. Now at the start of this year we wanted to do something big for the library in the form of an uh, OBC early funded project. So we were at the start of the year we were thinking about ideas that we for funding. And then one of the things that kept coming up was the idea of making reading more accessible to the public. We want to bring books closer to kids. We want to bring books closer to communities. And on the top of our list was the idea of a mobile library, a library that we can bring around town. Mobile libraries aren't anything new. So as far back as the time of forces and wagons, these have existed. But the first one credited for formal institution was one in 1914 by uh, a librarian Mary Tipco, librarian of the Washington County Free Library. So it was this horse full carriage that contained books and would be moved around Washington for the general public to enjoy it. Now, to this day, these concepts have evolved, you know, they've been pulled by horses, eventually they've been pulled by automobiles, electric vehicles. But one of the things that stood out of this very first book wagon was its aspect of sustainability and being powered not by a motor vehicle. But we did get we did get funding from OECRD, but we can't afford the horse. So we have something that's strong like a horse. We have something that eats like horse and sometimes smells like horse. <laughs> that is me. <laughs> so this was mentioned earlier. Outside of the work that I do with archaeology, outside of being a student here, I'm also a, BAM, uh, a brand ambassador for BAM Bike Revolution Cycles. A BAM ambassador. Uh, and I'm a regular bike commuter. And this is one of the things that we wanted to incorporate into the library. Um, we thought it would be nice to have it pulled by a bike and have that additional dimension of sustainability that a local material such as Bambi has to offer. Now, just a bit of a background on Bambi production cycles. Bambi makes bamboo bikes using locally sourced bamboo and papa. And they've been working with Galatalina since 2010 to create their bamboo bikes. Uh, beyond bamboo bikes, they also create materials for building, so uh, engineered bamboo for structures and architecture. And other things as well, such as little accessories that I show more later on. Now, there are sources that are <coughs> gathered from the zone designs and out, and then I'm sure some of you are familiar with the experiences that they offered in the Mugos, where you can experience a tour or are renting a bamboo bike to go around the historical world city. It was an amazing alignment of stars when I arrived to the library on the bamboo bike, and then that realization came along. Why don't we make the mobile library pulled by a bamboo bike? So that's where the concept of heritage on wheels, the mobile bamboo library, came about, the great child of our uh, at Librarian Nantes. So as 
construction began. The first prototype was very rudimentary, very simple. It was more considering budgetary constraints. So initially, we were just thinking of a simple uh, trailer that would contain recycled plastic crates to hold the books and then it can be set up at our different venues. But when we began prototyping the bike, we began prototyping the trailer, we found that bamboo was quite a bit more flexible than despite the limited budget. So slowly, we started seeing more elaborate forms that we could play around with. Uh, this is the founder of Tampai, right? When we was the when we were working that out, and then when we had it delivered the unfinished pro the unfinished product here at BSP. I'm sorry, here at Pupsa. And then construction began. Finally taking its final form from a simple box, we found that we could incorporate a shelf and a carrying space in front of it, as well as a roof. And in its final form, that we would take around various communities around Barangay Pililiman. Now, the target barangays here in Barangay Pililiman is still the start. We're looking forward to more places that we can bring this in the future. Surprisingly, it's not that heavy to build, though. It's actually quite pleasant. We opted for small 20 inch wheels that would be hard to bend out of shape. It's a lightly geared single speed drive train. So it doesn't go fast, but it's easy to build, though, and it's relaxing. Uh, prior to completion of the project, we have decided that the initial target. Uh, beneficiaries to the communities in Barangay Pilipinan, something close to home. So there would be, well, there have been three sessions so far with Village A, B, and C, where we hosted various educational activities along with the open mobile library that can be accessible to everyone. So for each of these communities, uh, there have been pre-registered 25 kids for to participate. But it's heartwarming Although a bit challenging to see later on that this number would grow <laughs> as we progress through the sessions. Now, apart from us at the, the library at Mapai, we also have partners with our Chaos Talking with us who facilitated sandbox activities and educational lectures. Uh, and later on, the participation of the SNC Public Library, uh, who at our last session really made the final the closing activity quite bonga, as they say. Mm. So it was open to the public when we got there on our first event. And then alongside that, as the kids were able to go to the books and read, uh, we hosted storytelling and lectures, as I mentioned, facilitated by Douglas and Arteus and also sandbox archaeology, so that kids could experience hands on what archaeology was like. So what happened was it wasn't just a venue for kids to read, it was also a venue for kids to learn about cultural heritage, to learn about what uh, archaeologists do, and with the use of the bamboo bike, to learn about sustainability, active mobility, and its importance and potential for us to expand in the future. This was our very first session at Village A. This was our smallest session. Although on paper, we accepted 25 kids to participate in the activities. The number kept growing and growing and growing with each activity. Although 25 was just for the program, the library was open for all. So people can just come and go and enjoy the books. And it was amazing how enthusiastic the kids were for the books because when people like to say, oh, the kids are only enjoying electronic media nowadays and everyone's just on their cell phones. But given the opportunity, the enthusiasm these children have for literature was heartwarming. Moving over to Village B, at this point of the project, we were now located at the covered court of Barangay Pitiliman, where it would take place later on as well. Um, and we saw substantial growth in the numbers of walk-ins. And finally, the one that we had at Village C late November. 
Although we had only accepted 25 registrants at this point, the number of walk-ins were just so numerous. And since we had the help from the Quezon City Public Library at this time, we were to accommodate more walk-ins for the program as well. Uh, the participation of the Quezon City Public Library was quite fun because they also introduced a puppet show as part of the program. And this puppet over here is our dear Dr. Mandy Mihalis. Ano ba? Pedro, sir. Sir Mandy is... Sir Mandy. Sir Mandy looks good. Uh, the reason for that is because they did a puppet show rendition of Matandang Matandang Moro, the story of Como So that was memorable not just for the facilitators, but not just for the kids, but also for us facilitators. It was such a fun time. Now, I like to think that the mobile library is more than just a vessel to carry books, and more than just a vessel to carry this, these experiences for kids. The structure itself, the mobile library itself, is sort of like a state installation art. So I mainly pedal the thing back and forth to the, to the locations, and then I would get cars honking at me, rolling down their windows, really curious about what that thing was made of bamboo. And kids would stop me asking, Kuya, is that really made of bamboo? And they were amazed to see so. Um, and apart from that message of cultural heritage and reading, there's also that message of sustainability and incorporating more sustainable means of construction like the use of bamboo and active mobility. Bamboo in particular is something that I think has lots of potential because, you know, it being grass, you cut it down, it grows right back up. It's infinitely more sustainable than traditional hardwoods, and yet it can be engineered to the same tensile strengths and the same durability as hardwoods with the proper work. Um, Bambike has been developing thing, plenty of things outside of Bambike, such as I mentioned this before, but the um, creation of construction materials through engineered bamboo. So processing bamboo slats and then pressing them in beams that are in comparable strength to hardwood. Uh, then the materials that we use for the bikes themselves are you have bamboo and then you treat it like carbon fiber. And then you get those similar properties, but with a material that's infinitely more sustainable. And nothing goes to waste with the materials. Um, some of the waste materials are recreated into accessories and toys that would otherwise be made of disposable plastic. It is even the sawdust doesn't go to waste where you can have them process with the charcoal of briquettes to can use as alternative sources of energy. Apart from that message of sustainability, the structure itself is also a reminder of how deeply ingrained value is in the new heritage. Even to the uninitiated, even to the average Filipino who isn't familiar with archaeology, but know about the Baki Kubo and the bamboo flutes, and then the bamboo uh, utensils, everything that we use here in the Philippines. But going even deeper into archaeology, just with uh, the publication last year of Hermine and colleagues, uh, the invisible plant technology of prehistoric Southeast Asia through stone tools reveals that bamboo has been worked here in the Philippines for a very, very long amount of time. Uh, I like how popular science labeled it in their publication as a prehistoric age of bamboo. Future directions, we're looking forward to get in touch with more communities in the future. We're looking forward to expanding our reach. We're looking forward to partnering with even more uh, communities, volunteers, institutions who would like to participate in this. So you can reach us through the Facebook page of Heritage on Wheels or the Solheim Library. We can start discussing here in East Coast Library if you have any ideas where we can proceed for when we went for. I forgot to mention this earlier, but we had this funny problem where alongside the growing numbers of sign-ups and children interested in visiting the library, we also had a growing number of volunteers who wanted to participate and help out. It came to a point that we had even more volunteers and children who would participate in the books. 
So it's a good problem to have. It means we have plenty of room to grow in the future. Uh, you can also check out Bandbike on Facebook, Instagram, and Bandbike.com. If perhaps you're interested in getting a bamboo bike for yourself, or if you want to experience tours in Tramuros, Batangas, and future expansions, we have plenty to say thanks to. Of course, Nantes, who was the who fought of all of this, who helped make it come to life. The UP School of Archaeology and the support of Ma'am Grace, um, everyone in Musa, staff, faculty, admin, security, and janitorial staff, in special mention, especially to the hands on health of Kuya Katz and Kuya Ramil. Um, the UP Community Affairs Office, Office of Barangay Captain, Barangay Council for Protection of the Children, the Puro Kids of the various places that we visited. The countless volunteers from UPSA, the Department of Anthropology, the different unit libraries, UCPL, and uh, donors, Ma'am Eliza, Mondes, Ma'am Freya, La Rosa, Ma'am Ferdi, Aldin of UPIS, and anonymous donors who helped grow the collection that will be housed in the mobile bank library. And even at that, there's so much to be thankful for. It was a fantastic year for the Solheim Library. And we're looking forward to 2024 to be another fantastic year. Thank you for listening. Thank you for all of you. Hi, um, can you describe the books that were included in your library and what are the age groups that you catered? I don't have the pictures here, but the books were quite varied, but there was particular focus on subjects of history, uh, cultural heritage, and natural sciences. But apart from that, we also had story books, mainly catered to uh, school-age children, particularly ages 3 to 7 to 12. But although that was what we had on paper, we had even older kids and younger kids coming along. During the last day of the session, at Village C. I love this as we even had adults who didn't have the opportunity to learn to read who came to the event because they wanted to learn to read. How many are in Filipino? Same question. Who is the percentage of the books in Filipino or Tagalog? Uh, perhaps, uh, around 70-30 or English in the Yuma de la Puna. Pero aside from that, from that uh, children's school. Are there other people who are able to take on a Filipino about their age, history, and how they got to the So maybe that's a, a good angle also to develop. Make Filipino resources as well. Yeah. Sorry, books that are similar to that. Yes, we actually got several uh, titles from Adorna House. Mm. So most of those were from the Philippines. Right? The Philippines. And we are looking for coordinations for the next project. Did um were there books lost? Uh maybe were there books lost? And we didn't know where to come in. Like cancer books, cancer books, common tracks and maybe some titles. <laughs> For me, if, there's, uh, if there are books lost, that's actually possible. <laughs> Uh, 
touch with, shape, and piece and test it will be. I think it's I think it's within that design. So let's see if we can integrate that. Can you have another trailer? Perhaps. So like a train, <laughs> <laughs> that you were contemplating or uh, appreciating like an installation art. Uh, why don't you pursue that as an installation art? Like, yeah. Maybe you have to document it right, either in, in uh, images or uh, in, in, in a, you know, like a film. In an ideal situation would be us being able to leave it to the community. But there's a challenge of who's going to be maintaining it in that period of time. So there's a problem of being able to staff it with that case. I was thinking something like when you have the shared library here, where people grab up books and then when they're done, they're here and there's a space. Or like a book delivery thing that you can help with or you're planning to do it now. Well, it's for the positives for that friend. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. They can they can actually go if you want. There's also the concern of the bike itself being stolen. The bike itself being stolen. Well, the last time I know a bum a bum bike cost about two thousand pesos, right? Um <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm mistaken. Uh, you know, like that, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's not young. 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 It's the one used for the project, if it were brand new, it would go for around 25, 25,000. Was that brand new? No, this mm -hmm. was one that we repurposed from in the room. Yeah. Uh, we don't sell those now, so... No, I'm not asking if they're selling, I'm asking how much it costs. Uh, the entire thing itself, we have a budget of 20,000. Mm -hmm. That's it? Yes, sir. So we were working with a very limited budget, but still we were able to come up with something yeah. And because, as you underscore, there's an amazing amount of volunteers. Yes. The community has, right? That's why, that's, yeah, that's what you know. How can you sustain for 2024 or 2025? Uh, expanding with more uh, sustained physical. The project. Uh, so we're going to be looking for more communities more people, more people and organizations to be part of. So that means, are you willing to work on it after your master's? After you graduate? <laughs> <laughs> I, which I will finish but this year. <laughs> yes. Uh, I'm yes. Is it something I'm passionate about? Okay. The rest is going with his master's. He finished 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> Collaborate with us, especially that they have 
but touch destroyed the music. <laughs> so that touch demonstrated that they're not something graphically associated. Oh, I Uh, the Zoo Art 